Hello, welcome to the frequency response module of our control system lecture videos. In this video, we will introduce the method of analysis and design of control system called the frequency response method. If you are wondering why we have so many methods of analysis and control systems engineering, it's because each one of the methods complement the other. One method in particular enables us to measure the system graphically without having to use a mathematical model. It enables us to find stability in nonlinear systems and help settle ambiguities when doing the root locus method. These are where the frequency response method has the advantage. The simplest way to define frequency response is the change of amplitude and phase of a sinusoidal wave as an input of a system to the system's steady state output response. In other words, we will analyze the difference between an input sine wave and its output response, which will also be a sine wave. Hold on, before we go any further in this concept, let's revisit the sinusoidal wave and its characteristics. In the steady state, sinusoidal waves will always generate sinusoidal responses or outputs. However, the frequency of the wave does not change. To understand a bit better, let's have an example. Say we have a sine wave of cosine omega t as an input to a system with omega equal to 1 radian per second. The input will split into two. One will go through a gain multiplier of two and the other through an integrator. The output response will yield two cosine t plus sine t. Using a trigonometric identity to simplify things up, with the trigonometric identity in question to be a times sine theta plus b cosine theta is equal to c sine theta plus phi, where c itself is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, and phi is equal to the arctangent of b over a. This simplifies the response to square root of 5 times the sine of t plus 45 degrees, which is roughly equal to 2.236 sine of t plus 45 degrees. The amplitude of the sine wave changes with a ratio of 2.236 and the phase shifts 45 degrees positive. But the frequency stays the same, as long as the system is linear and time invariant, or an LTI system. This response is usually represented in the complex numbers known as phasers, a quantity that has a magnitude quantity and an angle quantity. The magnitude of the phasor represents the amplitude of the sine wave and the angle of the, of the phasor represents the phase of the sine wave. The output phasor is produced when we multiply the input phasor and system phasor. When we multiply complex quantities, multiply the magnitudes, and add the angles. Here's the equation. The output phasor consisting of the magnitude of the output and the phase angle of the output is equal to the magnitude of the input times the magnitude of the system with the phase angles of the theta of the input plus theta of the system. Based on this, the system function in phasors or complex numbers will be magnitude of the system equals to magnitude of the output over magnitude of the input. And the phase angle of the system is equal to the angle of the output minus the angle of the input. The change of magnitude in ratios is called the magnitude frequency response, and the difference of phase is called the phase frequency response. Note that the frequency itself does not change, but the combination of the magnitude and phase frequency responses, m omega with the angle of phi omega, is simply called the frequency response of a system. Therefore, we have our definition of frequency response. After this, we will discuss about finding frequency response from a transfer function. That is it for this time. Next, we are going to find the frequency response from a control system's transfer function.